Okay, so today we're going to look at a concept called shouldering. And shouldering is um, a technique which you normally see in rook endings. It's normally called the hockey technique. So what happens is that one king stands in the way of uh, the other king. And and blocks the other king from coming in. So normally like what hockey players do, preventing the other person from defending. Uh, this is commonly uh, occurring after one player has been forced to give up, let's say, a rook, and he's got a passed pawn. So the the king is used to kind of shoulder the other king from approaching. Sounds more complex in explanation, but in practice, it's actually very easy to understand. So let's say you've got a king on f5 and a pawn on e5, and you've got this rook on b7 and a king on a8. So this position <clears throat> with white to play will give us an opportunity to see what this um, concept works. Out. The intuitive move is to maybe play the rook to e7 and then have the king approach the pawn like this. So let's see how this would work out. Let's say you go rook e7, black goes e4, and the black, the white king goes king b7, and black goes f4, king c6, e3, and after king d5, king f3, uh, king d4, e2, king d3, and Black has to spend two moves um, um, by his king to help the pawn promote, and in that time, the white side will be able to, to, to promote to, to catch the pawn. So, in this position, <clears throat> it becomes apparent that the king is required to stop this pawn. So the natural move, looking move e4 at this point is pointless if the king is going to catch up. So what you need is you want to prevent this king from catching up with the pawn. That's where the shouldering technique comes in. So king e4 will be the accurate move because once the king is here, it prevents the white king from approaching. So king e4 and after king b7, king d4, uh, the point is that now um, king c6 uh, blocks, the king is automatically blocked from approaching and black can advance his pawn. So this king is now not participating in the attack. So if he goes, let's say king b5, you go e3. And if king b4, um, now you advance your king, d3, still shouldering this white king from stopping the pawn. And after, let's say, king b3, now pawn to e2. And still, the king can't approach the pawn. And if he goes, let's say, rook d7 check, um, Let's say maybe even earlier, if you went to the seven check, what you would do then with the king is you would go king c2, and the pawn would still be in the run. The king would still be shouldering this king from um, stopping the pawn. Um, so this would eventually end up in a drop because the rook has to go back, and you can even go here and push the pawn. So this process is called a uh, shouldering. In the beginning uh, position, a better strategy for white, as opposed to moving the, the rook, might be to play king a7. And after e4, king b6. And after um, e3, rook e7 you force the king to protect the pawn. 
and also you kind of prevent the king from blockading your king. So after king f4, king c5 wins because uh, Blake never got a chance to throw a shoulder, a shoulder block. So here it becomes clear that with the technique of shouldering, black potentially can prevent a lost position if white plays uh, the natural looking moves. And this is the concept that we we, we call um, shouldered. Now the last element we need to look at is, so we saw that this king a7 could potentially stop the pawn. But what if uh, black meets king a7 with king e4? Using the same idea um, that worked earlier. So now e7 will be a mistake, but king b6 here is very strong. And after king d4, king b5, uh, e4, king b4. But now there is a threat of check here, which makes the king move either backwards or in front of the pawn or whatever, and allows this king to approach. So black has to play um, a move like what? Let's say if he goes e3 here, then rook d7 check is exactly what white wants. And after king e4, king c3, the shouldering is no longer working. Uh, because this has been broken by clever move order by white. And if white can get to this place, it draws. So after king b4, um, white, black has to be very clever and black king d3. Again, keeping the shoulder on the white. Now if you check him, he just goes here and the pawn still can be pushed. And now after King b3, white actually wins because now if you go e3, it goes to d7, and there's no way to escape this scenario. So there you have it, the concept called shouldering. You need to understand it if you're going to be playing a, a repentance, especially this uh, technique occurs a lot.